This move on now concerns are growing among Muslims as Saudi authorities plan to destroy the birthplace of Prophet Muhammad in the holy city of Mecca. Reports say that under the plan, the historic site will be destroyed and replaced with a royal palace for King Abdullah for his visits to Mecca. The work is part of a multi-billion dollar construction project in the holy city, which has already resulted in the destruction of hundreds of historic monuments. Saudi officials claim that the plan aims to expand Al-Masjid Al-Haram or the Grand Mosque to host more pilgrims. Riyadh is under fire for mass destruction of historic buildings in Mecca. Some reports say up to 95% of Mecca's millennium-old buildings have been destroyed to be replaced with luxury hotels and shopping malls. Well, to discuss that further, and I'm joined by Shabir Hassanani, who is an activist and Islamic scholar, and he's joining us live now from London. Now, Shabir, um, I imagine this, this doesn't come as a surprise, but at the same time, uh, how exactly can one uh, come to terms with the fact that a palace is going to be built uh, as this birthplace is destroyed? It's quite remarkable, really, that um, what the Saudi regime that professes to be a Muslim regime that professes to follow Islam is uh, is really doing all of these. I mean, if you look at Mecca, I remember Mecca maybe 20 years ago, and you look at it now, it's a world apart. Um, they, have tr they have turned Islam into a business, into something where they trade. And um, this actually is, it, ha it, it, it has a taste of what Islam was like prior to Islam uh, being revealed to Prophet Muhammad in the, in the days that we call Ayyam Jahiliyyah, or the times of ignorance, where all the time people used to come to a place, they used to buy and sell God. And the Saudi regime, which contrary to popular opinion, is not a Muslim entity. It has no connection to Islam, even though it professes Islam, it has no connection to Islam. Its actions speak loudly, much louder than its words and the many Qur'ans that it prints and all of this. It has no connection to Islam. This entity wants to turn Mecca and turn Masjid Haram, Masjid Nabawi. And Masjid Nabawi, of course, is another thing. They want to demolish that. This is something known. But when there was an uproar by the Muslims, they uh, backed down and they started saying, oh, no, no, we didn't mean to do this. We didn't want to do this. This wasn't our plan. This is just some extremists who are saying this. And um, we should understand that all Muslims, Sunni, Shia, all Muslims are against this cancerous entity of uh, what we could call Arab Zionism, which is referred to as the Saudi uh, regime. Uh, Shabir, if I could just come in here, I do apologize. We just have a minute left. So I wanted to ask, you know, the Wahhabis say that um, sites such as the one that they're going to destroy um, have no place in Islam. And we've seen that play out in many places around the world. And we're seeing that play out now in Iraq and Syria as well, even with other religions, religious sacred places as well by these extremists. So um, is there any basis for that? Because you're an Islamic scholar, so I'm asking you that in, from, in no, that it's, sense. It's, is there any basis for that in Islam, in fact? No, not at all. Um, Islamically, no one worships buildings. This is well known, and anyone who does, of course, this is insane. Um, this is not the way. This is an extreme cult that is outside Islam, that professes Islam, much like ISIS, who is really the child of Saudi and Qatar. These people, they want to break anything that has any connection to culture, anything that has a connection to God, to spirituality, to culture, to history. Because, of course, history reminds them of what they have done. And history teaches people that all of these oppressors, all of these uh, tyrants will have an end. And of course, Mr. S uh, Mr. Uh, Saud of uh, Saudi Arabia and the Qatar and all of these people and the Bahraini person, they're all in the same pot. They're all the same thing, along with Netanyahu. There is no difference. People should understand that Netanyahu, the Zionist cancer, and the Saudi cancer are one and the same. There is no difference between these two. And that the Muslims, Sunni, Shia, all Muslims, should come together against this cancer. Because this cancer is killing our people in Palestine, it's killing our people in Syria, in Iraq, in Saudi. Everywhere in the world, this cancer is killing. And at the head of this cancer is who? Everyone knows. We don't need to say over here who. Okay, on that note, we'll have to leave it there. But of course, we do appreciate your insight. That was Shabir Hassan Ali, who is speaking to us live from London.